Okay, so welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about data filtering. So what is data filtering and why do I need it or why don't I need it? Well, here is an example. Let's say I am gathering some data from a device, some data acquisition device or oscilloscope or something. And this is the real time graph of the data coming in from my device. And you might look at this data and say, yeah, that's exactly what I expect. And that's the data that I was looking for. Or you may say, hey, wait a minute, this doesn't look right. It looks like there's a lot of noise here. And actually what I was looking for is something like this dark sine wave, a nice clean sine wave. Why does it got all this noise on it? Or you may be thinking, well, um, I was expecting all of this noise based on the circuit that I'm measuring, but why does it have this low frequency sine wave in there? Maybe you weren't expecting that and it, it's just not right. So based on what you're measuring, you may find or you may not find that there's some bad data that you're measuring and you might decide you want to get rid of it and just hold on to the correct data. In this case, either the high frequency, what looks like noise, or you want to hang on to this low frequency sine wave. So how can you do that? Well, the first thing you can do, probably the best way, is to go to the root of the problem, find out what's causing this uh, maybe this noise interference in your nice clean sine wave and turn that off or shield your circuit or do something on the hardware side to get rid of that interference. Well, another thing you can do is you can use a hardware solution. So for example, if you're expecting that your good data is the sine wave and you want to get rid of this high frequency noise that really shouldn't be there, but you don't want to go to figure out what the source of the noise is. You just want to get rid of the high frequency noise in your circuit. You can go in and you can put, for example, a low pass filter like an RC filter. And that might help to get rid of the high frequency noise and just allow this low frequency sine wave to pass through. So you can go to the root cause and turn that off or you can do a hardware solution. What we're going to talk about in this video is one other option, which is a software solution. So let's say, say, for example, you're gathering this data and you don't want to go and find out what the source of the uh, noise is. Uh, and you also don't want to build a low pass filter. You want to just take this data and maybe do some sort of filtering in your software algorithm to get rid of the noise and just leave you with this nice clean sine wave. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So let's give some thought if, for example, we're expecting this nice clean sine wave and we're getting all this noise, how would you go about in your software, you're grabbing each sample every time step, you're grabbing a sample, and instead of following this nice sine wave, you get a sample and suddenly the next sample is way off, the other one goes very negative, and then the next one goes to zero. How might you address those different samples to kind of smooth it out to make it look like the sine wave using some sort of software algorithm? Well, let's take a look at how you might do that. Well, let's say that here we've got a, a sample and the value is 0.5. And the samples after that bounce around with this noise like we showed in our chart. And let's say the next sample after this 0.5 goes down to minus 1.2. And you know that the sine wave is supposed to be going up like this, not bouncing down to minus 1.2. And then let's say the one after that is going to go up to 1.3. And they're going to bounce around. So how are you going to filter out those values to make it look more like a sine wave? Well, one way, let's say we've got our sample is 0.5 and the next one we grab is a minus 1.2 and you say, no, that's not right. It, it can't be minus 1.2 if I've got a 0.5 here. Uh, it's got to be somewhere up around 0.5 because it's going to be a sine wave going up like that. So how do you do that in software? Well, one way is you can do a very simple algorithm that kind of simulates a low pass filter. And the way you do that is you take your present reading, in our case a 0.5, and you put a lot of confidence in that, but you put a lot less confidence in the new reading. Because you know it's going to be, the actual reading is going to be closer to 0.5 than it is to minus 1.2. So you might have a little equation that says, okay, my new reading, instead of minus 1.2, 
it's going to be mostly 0.5, but I'll take a little bit. I'll have a little confidence in this minus 1.2. I'll factor it in to my calculation, but it's going to be mostly the 0.5, which is kind of saying I have a lot of confidence in my present number, but the new number, I don't trust it that much. So here is a simple equation that you can use to kind of simulate a low-pass filter. And what it does, it says, okay, the new value, instead of being minus 1.2, I'm going to calculate that it's, let's say it's 80% of the value we have, which is 0.05, plus 20%. So 80 plus 20 equals 100%, plus 20% of the new value. We're only taking, uh, we only have 20% confidence in the new value. And we take 80% of the 0.5 and only 20% of the minus 1.2. And that gives us a 0.4 minus a 0.24, which gives us a 0.16. So our new value, instead of taking 1.2, it's going to be 0.16. Now, if the sine wave is going like that, it's not actually correct, but at least it's a lot better. So then we have this 0.16. That becomes our new value. Then we get the next reading, which is going to be, you know, maybe 1.3. We say, no, it's not going to be 1.3. So what we do is we take 0.8 times our 0.16 plus 0.2 time this, times this 1.3 or whatever. And we're going to come out with a value that's above 0.5 or 0.6. So the average is going to end up being probably closer to the correct value. So that is kind of the implementation of a low-pass filter. Now, as with anything in the science engineering world, Every solution has pros and it has cons. It has costs and it has benefits. So let's look at one of the negatives about this. So the big problem is what if the new value, in this case, minus 1.2, is actually 100% correct? We're going to come up with a new value of 0.16, but actually maybe it should be minus 1.2, depending on what's going on in your circuit. So you're taking a risk there. You, you may get a bad reading instead of the correct reading. And if it is correct, the minus 1.2 is correct, and let's say it stays at minus 1.2, what you can notice is since you're only taking 20% of whatever the new value is, you're not taking 100% confidence in the new value. Here we went from 0.5 to 0.16. By taking 20% each time, it's going to be quite a while before we get to the actual minus 1.2. Right? By using this low-pass filter, you're including a time delay that you may or may not want to get to the right value. So, it, you know, it's got pros and cons, and you have to balance those. So let's take a look in a little bit more detail about that time delay or the time constant that you're introducing in using this method. So here is an Excel spreadsheet giving an example of using different values in your filtering. And Instead of 80% trust in the old value and only 20% in the new value, uh, you can vary those ratios. So you can go like 90% and 10%, or 80 and 20, or 70 and 30. And we've got different curves here showing the result. If at 10 seconds we go up to a measured value of 1, how long it's going to take with these different ratios to get actually to that correct value of 1. And you can see here with a 90% filter, which means I take 90% of the old reading, only 10% of the new reading, it's going to take quite a while, 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds to get up to the correct value because you're only trusting the new values by 10%. And then as you trust the new values more, you give them more weight, it's going to get to the correct value a lot quicker. So. Again, you've got to figure out whether the noise is really totally just noise or whether you need to have a um, higher trust of the new values. So now let's say that um, this orange graph is the actual data coming in and we're convinced that it should look like this blue clean sine wave and all of this orange stuff is just noise and we want to filter it as we showed with that equation in our software. Let's take a look at some of the results we might get, and then later on we'll go and look at how we can implement that in software. 
So here I've got a couple of um, multipliers that we're using in our software to de define how much noise there is, how big this noise is, and also uh, how much trust we're going to put in our old value relative to the new value. So I'm going to start out with a 50% confidence where I trust the old value by 50% and the new value by 50%. And the result is going to be this still noisy waveform. But you can see it's a bit of an improvement over the orange, which is the original. Now I can crank up that um, percentage of the old value, the confidence I have in the old value, go up to 60%, 70, 80, 90%. And you can see we're really starting to filter out some of this noise because we are kind of applying a low pass filter to this. Again, it's not totally the same as our clean sine wave, but you can see it gives us a fairly good representation. Now, one thing that we can see here is that there is a bit of a delay from the actual sine wave to the filtered sine wave, and that's because, you know, with, when you're only taking, in our case, 10% of the new value, it's going to take a while to get to the correct values. Again, that's the one of the downsides of this, but it does help to give you a more filtered waveform. So let's look in the software and see how we can implement that in our code. So here is the code for that application we had. And as you can imagine, it's really simple. It's just one equation. Uh, this is in my timer event handler where I'm going out grabbing data. And all we need to do is calculate the latest value, the filtered sine wave value, is equal to the previous one times whatever the filter value is. And that's grabbed from this filter percent. You take the old value times that filter confidence in the old value, plus one minus that times the noisy sine wave, the latest value. So really, it's just one equation that you can implement to do a low pass filter. And all you have to do is decide uh, what the confidence levels are, and you're pretty much good to go. So that's about it for uh, filtering data. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.